Hi there, and welcome to The Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life, using real food, and we keep it real simple. And today, we are gonna make a delicious cooked eggnog. Now, you could make eggnog in any blender, even a food processor, if you don't wanna cook the eggs or anything like that. You can use the same ingredients and just throw them into your blender and whip them up. But a lot of people are a little funny about eating raw eggs. So I thought with the Ninja Foodie Hot Cold Blender, we can have the best of both worlds. We can heat the eggs up to 150 degrees and leave them there for five minutes, which based on all my research on the internet is enough to kill salmonella if it is present in eggs, which it is very unlikely to be, by the way. Um, and then we can still whip it up in the blender quick and easy and then get it chilled and we'll have a delicious eggnog. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is get my eggs cracked. Now, I'm choosing to crack them into a bowl just to make sure that there aren't any shells, but you could certainly crack them directly into the blender. That would be no problem. So I have five eggs. Now, these eggs are from my backyard chickens, um, but any large eggs will be fine. And if you are really worried about salmonella, you can certainly get eggs that have been pasteurized and heat treated in the grocery store. So you could make this without heating it up. But I thought, you know what? Hey, we're gonna heat it up. So this is gonna be a cooked egg. All right, Let me just get the rest of these eggs cracked. And you won't believe how easy this is. I mean, it's unbelievable. All right, perfect. So I'm just gonna dump the five eggs into the hot cold blender. And I'm gonna put in one quarter cup of sugar. Now, if you like your eggnog a little sweeter, you can certainly add more sugar. That will not affect anything. But I found that a quarter cup was just the perfect amount of sweetness for me. Then I'm gonna add in one cup of half and half. You can absolutely use whole milk instead of half and half. But I just felt like the half and half gave just a little bit richer of a flavor and I prefer it. So I'm gonna use the one cup of half and half. I mean, we hardly drink eggnog, right? I mean, you have it just around the holidays and maybe one or two glasses. So indulge a little bit and go with the half and half. You could probably do all heavy cream, but I did not test the recipe using all heavy cream. All right, so that's all that goes in now and we're gonna just get the lid on the blender. Line it up there and put it on. And then let's turn the blender on. And the only thing we're gonna do right now is pulse. Just pulse for five seconds. That's all you need to do, five seconds, real quick. Then you're gonna hit the cook function and go on low. That is very important. You don't wanna go on medium or high or you're gonna overcook the eggs and they're gonna start to cook and curdle, you know, like scrambled eggs, we don't want that. So we want it to be on low and just let it cook. So it's already counting up, it's cooking. Now every five minutes for the next 30 minutes, do just a quick one second pulse. The reason why we're doing that is because any of the egg and half and half mixture that's down settling at the bottom could become overheated and start to curdle. I have not had any issues with this, but I've always pulse just for a second about every five minutes. Then we'll add in the rest of our ingredients and we'll be done. That's it, that's all there is to it. Now, if you are not worried about salmonella and you don't care that this is cooked to the 150 degrees and held there for five minutes, you don't have to cook at all or as long. However, I do think that cooking it for at least 15 minutes is going to give you a thicker eggnog. So if you don't mind it being thin, you could pour, put all the rest of the ingredients right in the blender right now, whip it up, just hit the smoothie button, and then get it in the refrigerator to chill and you're done. But I'm gonna cook it, so we're gonna wait and I'm gonna pulse it every five minutes for the next 30 minutes. Okay, so we've cooked for um, five minutes on low, and now I'm just gonna hit the pulse, and I, that's all I do. It doesn't even go to a second. Just, just pulse real quick, and then let it go another five, and I'm gonna do this again every five minutes until it hits 30. And the reason why I'm doing it is so that the egg mixture does not cook on the very bottom, causing little 
uh, little bits of curdling egg. Now, if for some reason you get distracted and you forget to do it, don't worry about it. Keep going with the recipe, but then you're gonna want to strain it just so you can get those little curds uh, or those little curdling bits of egg if in fact that happened on the bottom, which it may or may not, but I noticed one time I had just a little tiny bit and I thought, mm, yep, yeah, we need to definitely do this every five minutes. Okay, so we're coming up on 15 minutes and before I pulse again, I'm gonna go ahead and take a temperature. And to do that, you only have to remove the center so you don't have to interrupt the cooking process. So I'm just gonna lower my thermometer down. Now I don't wanna actually hit the bottom, but I wanna be somewhere kind of midway through the mixture. Looks like we're at about 135 degrees. That is perfectly normal for this um, timing of 15 minutes. That's why we need to go 30. If you made half of a batch of eggnog, you could certainly go 15 minutes and you're, you would be heated already. All right, so just a quick little pulse and that will get it mixed up again and prevent it from you know cooking on the very bottom. Also what you'll see as you do this is you'll see a lot of foam on the top. Don't worry about that, it's gonna go away. Um, it's just because we're whipping air into everything from using the pulse button. All right, so 15 more minutes and I will pulse every five. And then at the 20, five minute mark, I will really start to look at the temperatures. I wanna see them at about 150 or above, but not above 160 or your eggs are really gonna cook. So it's kind of that sweet spot between 150 and 160 and you wanna hold it there for five minutes. And usually I've achieved that at 25 minutes and then I just hold it there for the next five minutes and then we're done. Then we get the other ingredients in, whip it up, put it in the fridge to chill. All right, let's go ahead and get another temp just because there's no need if it's up to the one, it is at like 145. So you see what I mean? It takes, it takes 30 minutes to do this. I've tested it three times now, so I pretty much know. But you know, hey, a girl can hope that it gets done a little quicker, right? All right, another little, little pulse. We'll go another five minutes, and by that time, it should be up to the 150, and then we'll hold it there for five minutes, and we'll be done. Well, we'll add in our other ingredients, hit the smoothie button, and then we'll be done making our cooked eggnog. All right, so we're coming up on 25 minutes, and I would expect this to be 150 degrees now, and you might wonder why I'm checking the temperature before I pulse, and that is so that I don't, um, that I, that I get an accurate temperature, that I don't introduce air, which is gonna cool it down a little bit. So I wanna see where we are. Oh gosh, yep, we are at 155. That's perfect. We don't want it to go up too much more than that. So now I am definitely going to blend it and even maybe a few seconds longer. Um, and I'll probably take a temperature again in another two minutes. I really cannot afford for this to get up to 160, 165, or we're gonna have scrambled eggs with half and half. Hasn't happened yet though, so I don't think it's going to. But I'm gonna keep a really close eye on this. The other thing you can do, and as a matter of fact, I think I will, is just take out the middle part and let some of the heat dissipate a little bit. All right, we're at 158 still, so I'm not too worried. I am gonna pulse again. Don't forget to put this back on. I have forgotten it, and I have had eggnog spew out. Even though it's a little amount, it will happen. It'll just start shooting out. I got it all over my cabinets when I made it one time. Um, the other thing I can tell you now is that you could double this recipe pretty easily. Um, the only thing is, is that if you're gonna cook it, if you're worried about that part of it um, and bringing it up to that 150 degrees for five minutes, then you're probably gonna have to do it a little bit longer because 30 minutes is not gonna probably heat a double batch of this up. But um, if you're not worried about it, it'd be super easy to just throw all the ingredients in and blend it up um, and you can do a double batch, no problem. I don't think you'd get a triple batch in here though. Okay, good. We're at 154. 
So I did a lot of research about the salmonella because I knew if I put out a video or put out a recipe that called for uncooked eggs, even though personally, I am not concerned about using raw eggs. I know a lot of people are, and I thought I really need to get this to where it's a cooked eggnog so that people's comfort level increases and they wanna make this, because that's my goal. I want you to make the recipes, you know? Um, so all the research that I found is that heating up to 150 degrees and holding it for five minutes will get rid of 99.9999% of the salmonella if it's present in the egg. And it's such a, a low risk of it even being present that I can pretty much tell you this is safe to do. All right, let's get another temp real quick. All right, we're holding, we're holding nicely. I'm just gonna put this back on. And pulse again and take it back off because I don't want it to heat up anymore. All right. Oh, I'm excited. Seems like a long process, but it really is. And it goes by fast and it's so delicious. I mean, I'm not even a huge fan of eggnog because I kind of think it's like over sugary and a little like thick and I'm just not a fan. And then of course, you know, you can add alcohol to it. Whenever I've done that, it's even worse. So um, I'm just not a fan. My husband loves it though. So I used him as a guinea pig. He gives this two thumbs up. We actually bought commercial eggnog and um, compared it and we both agree that this one's better. And then I had, um, I had somebody offer to test the recipe for me. So thank you, Amber, for doing that. She is a huge eggnog fan and she tested the recipe and she said it was absolutely delicious. She thought it might need a little more sugar and that's why I mentioned you could add in more sugar if you wanted. Um, but after it sat for a day, you know, overnight in the fridge, um, she sent me a message and said, you know what, it's spot on, it didn't need any more sugar. Also keep in mind if you're going to add in any alcohol, that's gonna kind of change the flavor a little bit. You may wanna sweeten it up then and you may not, but you can make those decisions on your own. Just do it how you like it. All right, we are good to go here. We are still at 155. That means that we have held the temperature for the five minutes that we needed to, and now we can add in the other ingredients. Real quick before I do that is I'm just gonna go ahead and pulse. And I'm gonna do that for just, just two seconds. All right, now we can get our lid off. It is steamy we can add in our other ingredients. And this, these are the spices that I'm using. I found that this gave a really nice balance of flavor, but you can increase, decrease, omit. You can not spice it up. You can do whatever you want. It's your eggnog, you know, do whatever you want with it. What I have here is a half of a teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a half of a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, and a quarter teaspoon of cloves. Cloves was an addition that I actually added in on my third test recipe because I just felt like there was something missing. And once I added that in, it really just balanced everything out. But if you're not a fan of cloves, don't add them in. Probably want a little cinnamon though. That really is delicious. Then I have a half of a cup of heavy whipping cream. I'm gonna add that in. That's gonna help thicken everything up. And we probably could have put that in and cooked with it, but we're getting up high in the temperatures and I just didn't wanna risk anything with the, the heavy whipping cream. I think it would be fine, but it's also added volume to heat up. So, you know, who wants to spend more time doing something? And a half of a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now I'm gonna put the lid back on. All right, so now we are in the cook mode. We need to cancel that out. See how these lights are blinking over here? So we need to cancel that out. If you push it, then all the lights light up. Now let's see if we can just go to smoothie.
one. All right. So now you have eggnog that is warm. That is probably not ideal. We probably want it to be chilled. Now you can drink it warm, and I know some people do, and I've tasted it warm, and it's perfectly fine. But there is just something I think it's a little bit better if it's cold. So one last thing I want to talk about is one of the um, liquors that I found, in case you want a, a boozy eggnog, because um, it's perfectly fine right now, but if you wanted a boozy eggnog, there is one type of whiskey that I found that paired so nicely with this that I really wanted to share it with you. So let me reach over here. And it is a pecan whiskey. Now this brand is from Revel Stoke. There are several different brands. Um, there's a William Wolf brand and there's the Revel Stoke and I'm sure there's others. So this is a pecan flavored whiskey. And if you can see by the bottle, three batches of eggnog and I have really enjoyed the pecan whiskey in the eggnog. And I should say Jeff has too. So what I do when I'm going to add booze to the eggnog is put the booze in after the cook period because you don't want to cook the alcohol out and I use a half of a cup for a pitcher. Now, of course, you can adjust that down or up to your liking. You could add it in by the glass. So keep this non-alcoholic and then put a little shot in your glass and then pour yourself some eggnog on top and kind of stir it up and you're good to go. So anyway, I just thought it was really great. I love the pecan whiskey, so check it out if you like that flavor because it really paired nicely. All right, so I'll pop this in the refrigerator. It'll take about four hours to chill, and then I will get to tasting it. So the eggnog is chilling now in the refrigerator, and I, I said to Jeff, I said, you know what? I'm going to clean the blender, and it's one of the coolest features of the blender, so why don't we tape it? Even though it's in my unboxing video, and I can certainly link to that video right up there, but I thought, hey, let's just do it real quick. So anytime you use the blender, you can put it on the clean cycle. It's not always necessary, but I kind of like do it all the time. Um, pretty much after I cook anything, I usually put it on the clean cycle because I don't know, it's kind of cool and it's easy and it's hands off. So I have 20 ounces of water in here, a couple drops of dish detergent, and I'm going to put the lid on, turn the blender on and just hit the clean. And that happens like right away. So I, I didn't jump that time, but I usually do. Okay, so that's it. Now it goes for six and a half minutes and periodically through that cycle, it will blend up. And it just really helps to get anything that's stuck down in that well loosened up and brought into the liquid. It makes it so easy to clean. Because honestly, these blades are so sharp that you don't wanna be digging down there with any kind of a dish rag or sponge or whatever you're using to clean it. You don't wanna get down into the well where the blades are because it's super, super sharp. Um, so I find this to be just so easy. And then I will take it over to the sink. I rinse it out and I use, you know, a, a dish cloth and I just clean it with soap and water on the inside, wipe it on the outside, spray it out, and it's good to go. One thing I forgot to mention is it's actually heating the liquid. So it does that quick blend that we saw right when you first press the clean button. And now I can hear it, it's starting to heat up. So it actually is a heated clean cycle. So it's not just cold water sloshing around. You might say, well, I can do that myself. This heats it up. So it really is an effective way to clean the blender. And I think it's just super cool actually. <laughs> All right, so the eggnog has been chilled and there has is very little settling. So I can see all the spices still uh, mixed throughout the mixture, but I always stir it up just to make sure. There is still a little foam on top too, but that won't bother anything at all. In fact, the foam goes away as you stir a little bit too, which is kind of odd, isn't it? I guess the settling. So the foam is lighter, so it rises to the top. All right, here we go. Some chilled eggnog. And this is booze free. So I am getting a little foam when I pour it out, but that's okay. 
I will let it settle just a little bit because I want to make sure that I get that thickness so I can describe that to you, how thick it is and everything like that. And the foam obviously is, is pretty light, you know. It's still delicious though. All right. Cheers. Wow. That is good. It is eggy, but not too eggy. It is not too thick, which I happen to really like. If you wanted it thicker, you could either add some more eggs or maybe even more heavy cream. Mm. The spices and the sugar level are spot on for me. I mean, perfect. But please feel free to adjust them any way you like. So there you have it. That is a quick and easy way to make 30 minute cooked eggnog in the Ninja Foodie Hot Cold Blender. I hope you give it a try and I hope you let me know in the comments below how it worked out for you. So you might wonder why the Ninja Foodie is sitting up here and not the blender and that is because I am about to make a double batch of this eggnog in the Ninja Foodie. So if you don't have the Ninja Foodie Hot Cold Blender and you still wanna make this cooked eggnog, do not worry, I have a recipe using the Ninja Foodie or you can make it stovetop the same way and I will link to that recipe right over there.